I now call to order the <clears throat> Planning Commission regular session of Tuesday, October 4, 2016. Roll call. Uh, Buckles here. Strain here. Drew here. McCoy here. Burke here. Classic here. Let the record show that Commissioner um, South Pack is not with us this evening. Can we all stand for Pledge of Allegiance? Thing that everybody here should be aware of. Item four, 
Is there a report? Yes. Next month is the month to vote for chair and vice chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll find it out. I'm just saying. It's all fine. I'm not sure you want to be in the big surprise. That's all. Okay. Um. The whole business. Let's do something else. Uh, I was going to say, what was that? The VIP. I've actually um, pre-valued my packing information in my office. Um, there is some movement, at least, uh, encouraging movement on the Route 13 safety corridor plan uh, that VDOT has been working on for a, well, for a year. Um, there were a couple of public meetings uh, that were held at the community college last fall. And there was a common period, I believe it closed in December. Um, that project has slowed down for a number of reasons um, during the spring, um, but they are ready to move forward with the final draft of that um, 13 safety report. And it, it is the entirety of 13 from the bridge up until the Maryland border. Um, the two locations proximate to Cape Charles of any interest are. And the food line stop or exit or turn lane and uh, at the air wall uh, road. The food line, don't expect to get a traffic signal, um, but there is some engineering that they uh, propose to do by way of in markings. Also, there's uh, at least a proposal to put an access road from the food line to Business 13 on the charity side, so people could at least access. Oh, okay. So they would have to go across the railroad tracks too. Well, but you don't have to turn out. You don't have to turn out. You can turn out and you go out and get on that and turn in and come yeah. across the other side to alleviate the need. <laughs> you know, yeah, there are all the extra private actions out there. I don't want to think about it. And that's the thing about the food line uh, turn. I, intuitively, we all worry about it, but the actual data about crashes is, is low. So as a result, um, you're not going to get traffic by like Not. Not. Good. Not just going to be the yeah. That's pretty much the way it works. Yeah. What's the I, I missed what you said, Andy. What's the likelihood of getting the access from into old 13 or business 13? That's part of, I guess it's part of the plan. It, it is. is. Yeah. If you go to VDOT's website and do a search, it'll pop up. I mean, it's a pretty expensive report. I mean, I read that Arlo Catler is getting rid of a lot of cut throughs and U turn areas up and down 13 with their problems. Um, but you, it's there. I mean, it was post summer, I think, next summer. But it's pretty good if it is for the food line, at least you're doing something. And the folks at the planning district commission are sure happy to answer any questions. Bring those back. That's right. He was chair of the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. Anything else on reports before we move on to other business? Nope. Okay. Report the report. 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 the the Second year uh, summer data, uh, again from Friday, Friday, June the 10th through Sunday, September 11th, they have conducted observations of parking counts, again using the uh, 1999 police department parking count. Uh, in the spring of this year, I went around and, and spot tested that and it still holds up. Bay Avenue count is 66 vehicles, uh, assuming that they were that they would be parallel parking stalls painted. Uh, without having a stall, obviously there's uh, an, an irrational use of space or, or an inefficient use of space sometimes. Okay. Um, this year we had 44 observations. Last year we had between two. Um, out of the 44 observations this year, 14 times the count exceeded 66, uh, which makes for 31.8% of the time. Uh, 
last year, uh, the 82 counts, uh, the number of the times it exceeded was I believe it was 20, 27%, 26%. Anyway, the two-year average comes to 27.78% of the time. Um, the parking exceeds 66, and that's on the west side of Bay Avenue from Washington to the pavilion. What happens when it exceeds 66? They go on the east side. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's, that's pretty much what happens. Um, there's always good people who are going to park on the east side of the street because that, that's, there's a difference in convenience there. Uh, at least in the morning, you get shade on the east side for people who want to park their cars in shade. Um, so you're always going to find people park on the east side. Typically, those aren't all high numbers once they get north of Tazewell, but at least between Tazewell and Mason, that's just an intense parking area. I guess all the amenities are right south of the beach. So most people park on the east side of the street or west side of the street. About the south end. The north end gets uh, pressured less, except when the east side, on the, on the west side fills up. That's when you start seeing um, the heavy traffic or parking on Bay Avenue that goes all the way up to Washington. That doesn't happen often, but that, that you do see that. Um, the side streets is always harder to tell because you don't know on an individual basis who's a resident, who's a summer rental, um, who's there as a day trip to the beach. And the side streets have a different sort of pressure, as I pointed out. Uh, you lose curb space because, in, at least this summer, by the number of boat trailers that are there. And it's illegal to have a boat trailer as long as they have to cover. Uh, they've just consumed the space. Uh, so we're working against a couple of things by way of what's become normal, which is that it's the boats on the streets, and maybe didn't have that in 1999 before. It's not mentioned. We also didn't have golf carts. And something that, that developed organically was the golf carts parking perpendicular. Um, they take up, how wide is the golf cart? Six feet. Um, so if they park perpendicular, it's terrific. Because, um, again, it's an inefficient use of space if you've got smart stalls, because now you've got a vehicle that's small taking up one third of the parking space for a sedan. One way of saying, uh, if the purpose of the angle parking is to meet demand and demand pressure, demand pressure reading really doesn't show that it's typical yet. Do, 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 do you get any complaints? Do you get any Zero. complaints from residents in that area? Zero. Zero. Well, on the, based on this uh, study, was this based on seven days a week? Yeah. So, and not every day. Um, and uh, also some of the observations from a year ago were twice a day. What I learned from the first year to the second year was if you go out there at 11.30 in the morning on a Tuesday, or you go out there at 3.15 on that same Tuesday afternoon, uh, the number of cars hasn't changed all that much because it's not a heavy traffic. Now, obviously, summer weekends, you're going to feel more pressure. More yeah, that, that's, what, that's what I was getting. It's, it's very much the Time Sunny day, weekend, is generally packed from both sides until mm -hmm. the gills. And the purpose of it, in my opinion, on this parking would be to take the help. Help that scenario out. Regardless of 27%, 27% of those over seven days. So during the week, yeah, it's not that much traffic, we said that sunset time. And for a mm -hmm. predominant resort count, 27% is pretty hot. Yeah. <coughs> Theory should be going up next year. And my, my main biggest concern here is how do we accommodate <clears throat> the parking by right of, of boats? And Man, we were already done a couple years ago, we addressed that. Yeah. And it's a state vehicle, it's a state road, we have no control over that. The number of that was like yeah. three or four years ago. We went to that. Well, we tried to think unless it, present, unless it presents a, a, a traffic hazard. We try to restrict it. I mean, if, if some of them are too wide and they stick out and they make you go past the double yellow line. Yeah, you don't have that on No, no. No, 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 no the side street, it does. Side streets, it's illegal if you have to cross the double line. Right. There isn't. If there is a 
There are a couple instances in town where that exists now. But. Well, I remember we went through that whole yeah. old park we tried yeah. to That was Tom Bonadale's. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, that was but three or four years ago we went through that whole thing. And yeah, we, we can't control because it's state of mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not. I'm not suggesting control. All I'm saying is we need to make allowances for it in, in the angle parking, reverse angle parking profile, whatever that happens to be. So that there is sufficient space for those vehicles to there's, park. There's no way. They they won't. If you had if you had reverse angle parking, there's no way you'll know you have a boat. No, 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 no. Okay, you missed my point. Do we have to do reverse angle parking or non-reverse angle parking? And there's no middle ground. Can we do some of one and some of the other? That's fine, honey. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Well, it would be full on or reverse, whatever. Yeah, full, full obviously it makes no sense. Yes. I mean, I don't know what people would be doing down there with the boat anyhow. You can't launch it from there. No, it's the same thing they're on Mason Avenue. They can't turn around and go down there and parallel park in the first thing to park. They're not going to do, do it down the bay. I mean, there are people that come in that are guests that might be down there. George Ferguson, for example. His house is there. He doesn't, in the summertime, he parks his boat by his house. But in the winter, you put some harbor for a lighthouse, which is annoying. So I have no control. It's just, I mean, he puts his boats there because I mean, he doesn't want to pay for storage. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Well, I put my boat behind my house, and I moved my fence in 15 feet to have room for it. But it's a pain in the ass. I mean, I'd rather have that lawn. Yeah. I don't um, think we saw. A significant increase in parking demand that could have happened, and you know, my, my, my impression was it wasn't significantly different from last summer when it looked like you know we could go another year without doing anything, and it wasn't like a you know huge demand to do something based on the survey. The trend is up, right? But the trend is up. But well, I don't think we should. The trend is up was on the weekend. We should let boats cloud that issue that's down there at least. Yeah, it should be it should all be. Then we don't have to make provisions down there. My whole point on the on the parking is to accommodate the tourists here. It's not the it's not the ones that come here to rent. It's the weekend warriors that come down from Washington or from Eastville or from Sheridan. They come to the beach. I know a lot of people that come from those areas, some come from Hunger's area, but they're coming in and bring their cars and park them. Right. So it's kind of, most of these are locals <clears throat> because it is the only beach that so you don't have to pay for. Right. Sure. You know, whatever we do down there, if we do anything, one of the things I'd like to put on record is that we should, uh, the, the islands should be built up. You know, our, the run down the, almost the center of the street. Because, if we, if we were to institute reverse hand parking, I see a scenario where they might be driving across those things or something. If there's also an issue with flooding down there. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, so it's got cream in the engine. Yeah, I don't know what it could be. It was flooded the other day. Pretty bad. It was because of the full moon on top of the Yeah, no, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, but, well, these dudes aren't up to the pay everyone. It's like it's nothing to do with breaking hands. It's just they, they can't you know, high high tide and water can't drain out. Right. It's part of the problem. Too. Um, it's, I mean that's my whole thing. I mean we're we're trending up. I'm not saying we have to do it, but something we really gotta keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, we should keep on doing it every yeah. summer, and you know, especially look at that east side of bay. If well, that okay. starts to overflow, then then that's the trigger, I think. Well, the trigger is, you can look at, if you compare them, if you, you just did these studies on the weekend, this would probably be 100%. No. I, I, was there, I was there every day this summer, and I thought so too. Really. Well, I was, I was, I was expecting, you know, a heavier fill than we saw. Basically, based on the west side on the weekend? Yeah. It was rare that, that the west side was ever completely full. There were, it might be all but set five or six spaces, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the first one to suggest something that it looks like a name for it. 
Okay. Any other comments? I still encourage the striping of the crosswalks. Yes, yeah. yes. That's a beat up. That's a beat up. Right. right. That's, yeah, that's true. Okay. Did you tell me I'm going to go and then go to the next one? Yes. Two. I think I can answer that. 
a number of us, a number of people at my age are resistant to change. <laughs> <laughs> you know, plus, I agree. plus when we all the drivers had, we were taught that. That's right. That's right. But so many people cannot do that. But wasn't the suggestion at no. the end of each line, so you're not really dealing with a car in front of you or just behind you? Isn't that what you said? At the end, at the no, oh, I was yeah. saying, you put the no, but this is a comment in general that parallel yeah. parking is easier than reverse lane parking. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it all. I don't know what car you use. Well, most of, most, most of the, the cars in the last couple of years have backup sensors on them and they display them. Yes, you said your car is very easy. Mine's got it's a camera. camera. It's yeah, that's all the cars are going to work. So I find when I go down the road, I actually see cars actually swerve out in the middle of the road and then back in that way. I believe cool. what you do is it's, it's a third of the reverse angle of a parallel park. It's more set in that. I just think it's less common. Yeah, it's very it's less common. Yeah, we've been through this. I mean, the thing is, the C dot told us that was their preferred method of parking at the time. The two changed after they got a lot of the points, which made us all the more jackasses. <laughs> well, there's a lot more information on the internet now than there was three years ago, I can tell you that. You know, and, and the signs of certain town news, one, two, three steps, you know, can go across. And you know, you signal and the three step thing and doing it and all. It's just, it's getting to be much more common. And the Bicycle Association of America loves it. It's fully, absolutely fine because it's cut down from yeah. well, corridors when you open in the path and walk on a bicycle. It's another little side thing that people aren't aware of that causes a lot of accidents. And the whole town plans to get more people on in golf carts, on bicycles, on their feet, and exactly. get the automotive vehicles off the road. So if we, but apparently there's no getting around not being able to put a bike lane in front of one Mason because it's not wide enough and there's nothing to do about it, I guess that. But that, that would certainly uh, drive the issue home about the safety aspect of the reverse angle parking and the, the, the statistics of which are just in the, you can't argue with. Well, you think you brought up another. Can we separate the vehicles to so know how many vehicles versus the off the most the years? I have kept, I have kept track on that and say it's more golfers coming down instead of cars. I mean, it almost seems like there are, I don't know. Well, with, with all the work that we got there down on Cape Charles Road, you know, it's never going to be skewed for a while. Because well, you can't get there from here. Bumpy, really bumpy, and muddy. No, well, okay, for a lot of folks, you can't get there from here. It's no. not impossible, but it's going to discourage a lot of folks. Well, well yeah, that's the other thing, too. From Bay Creek? Mm hmm. I've been on that dirt road a long time. I drive right down. No, you can't. Road. Road. It's in Thomas and Bassett now. But I go on the road. There's 200 yards or so over here breaking the law. That's, that's all you do right now until they fix that. Yeah, yeah and it's, it, thankfully, the police have been very gracious in the book. They're not going to fix it. Just want to do it on the side, on the shoulder. You know, yeah, four foot shoulder. You know, four foot shoulder. Let's start with the front off now. Yeah. So what's the uh, summation that we're going to re the reverse angle parking for the avenue? We're going to just postpone that until next year. Thinking about it. Doing any active surveillance. But it would probably be a good idea to go ahead with the cross park. Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Right. Cross so that would be a motion to set the work. I guess an application for parking. The crossing is for pedestrians. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. So I will just stop that. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Draft amendment to Article 3, Section 3.15.B, Limited Access Commercial Activity in Open Space District. Uh, following up on last month's uh, discussion, the draft uh, language is amended uh, 
to show the hours of operation of 9 a.m. through sunset. Uh, following the meeting, staff had an opportunity to talk with a couple of other department heads about uh, some of the operational uh, features of the program. Uh, should it move forward? Um, recreation department is uh, amenable to having their summer employee checking on the status of the area from time to time as a live uh, planning department made that commitment as well. Um, and uh, preliminarily mentioned with the, uh, discussed with the uh, treasurer the need for some uh, seasonal or amendment to the license to allow folks to uh, conduct their business with the idea that we recognize that there may be a measure of turnover from people who seek a license in May for someone who's kind of expected to be there to you know, you know I've ticked off people about that license to sort of, you know, because it's pretty more, so I do a lot of business with all the people like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I agree with them. It's extremely not fair that, you know, you pull a peddler's license, it's 50 bucks, but a peddler's license is generally a one-time thing, one-time thing. Now you're actually, we're actually thinking about putting vendors down seven days a week, or whatever it turns out to be, you know, all day long. And they're generating revenue with paying a peddler's license for the brick and mortars to pay, you know, their license would be based on their gross sales. That should be, I mean, the priority should both be the same, in my opinion. I don't agree with that particular tax or license. I think it's excessive. But we've got to treat them fair on both sides. So everybody's paying the play. You know what I mean? Do you have a sense of what that is, I understand it's volume based. But on, but on average, pardon? Gross sales. I get it. I get the process, which I don't think is, I think it's I, ridiculous. Yeah. But do you have a sense of what an average is for the brick and mortar on Mason? Depending upon what they're doing, I mean, I they're, they're yeah. ranging. I get net sales, but they're pretty much no, similar. No, gross. No, gross you're sales. You're a restaurant. Wow. Well, I mean, there's some, it's, a, it's a volume thing. So the, there's some a tremendous amount of volume. So it turns out they're doing anywhere from 800,000 to a million and a half, two million. So two million dollar a year business is about four grand. Mm -hmm. So these guys, you know, if, they're pet, if these guys are down there, let's say it's a hot dog cart. Right. And he's turning around and doing four or $500 a day. It's a lot of hot dogs. It's a lot of hot dogs. It's great drinks, chips, and everything else. I think it ought to be. But you're there, if you're there from 9 to, you know, 9 to dusk, you know, it's not like it's conceivably impossible, at least on the weekends. During the week, you're not going to make a squat. I think it needs to be assessed definitely more than a peddler's license. It needs to be assessed at some type of reasonable amount for the season. Well, I think that helps with the brick and mortar guys. They're not going to sell them like no, 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 I know that, but even, even the retail shops are probably anywhere from three to $400 a year for their license. Okay, so make it 200 for a season. They're making most of that, most of that net sales is coming between in the season. <coughs> they're not going to sell the volume of the brick and mortar. They're not. Saying they're just going to make But when you're trying to put some equity to it, right, I mean, they need to be somewhat equalized. What's a peddler's license? <clears throat> Fifty bucks per what? Event, week, month, month. Yeah, the peddler's license is like a one-time event. I agree that's that that's that's a one-time one but one-time assessment, but a one-time payment would be the best because just the, um, how are you going to collect that data based on their gross sales? They're going to fear not. I mean, you've got to keep a tax record. They have to have a business license. They have to be too. Yeah. That's the whole problem. I mean, you can do the same thing. Cash sales are the killer, and it's hard to help with the leases. Yeah. Well, I don't think they'll be like, I mean, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I know. 
they, 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 they can't be down there working out of a cigar box, right? I mean, they have to have a cash register with a tape in it, right? I mean, no, aren't they required to have that file? You're not going to get a card to report sales. <laughs> I mean, it's no. that. Yeah, so all they have to do is sell them. I think it's quite funny. Well, Marsha Services, if it's a credit card, you have to track it. That's easy. Cash back to track. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the biggest challenge. I mean, I'm serious. Cash is yeah. the biggest yeah. yeah. challenge. I mean, you say no cash. Uh, <laughs> that won't work. No. Well, that was all the tourists coming through. But, but anyway, so see, it is complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Track. I so let's just forget that. Put a one time fee on it. But whatever we think is well, right. I that, you know, I think there's a general concern we don't have enough brick and mortar eating establishments. This, I mean, this past summer, I don't know how many times we went to the restaurant, the restaurant, I could have used the phone, I suppose, but just not being surprised that everyone had an hour more wait, you mm -hmm. know. Yep. And right. we don't want to do anything that's going to hurt that, but we need more, not, not less. So presumably, what the vendor is going to have, they're not going to duplicate what you get at these brick and mortar places. You know, like I said, I think we ought to be very careful about this, not to be un unintentionally uh, harming what what few establishments we may have. I think well, well, I think I think a seasonal license, like you mentioned, yeah. would be right one time seasonal license. That's right. I don't know if two hundred dollars is it may be too much, but maybe at least a hundred. No. Well, a hundred no. doesn't seem to be. I don't know. No, 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 no. I would think hundreds enough. But you said you say brick and mortar pays four hundred dollars. Depends on their sales. It's just getting your ball money. Average. Well, it throws all over the place. Well, they report sales. Do we know what they? Do? Yeah, I mean they're throwing taxes. It's easy to get that stuff. And I appreciate your weighing on behalf of the merchants, but I'm surprised that there hasn't been more input from the merchants. They're not happy about it. I mean, well, why don't they care? The question: yeah. Where are they? I mean, why do they have the photo to show up for that? They say they're unhappy if they don't show up. They be on his head. That's what's going on. Because they know he's on, on the board. No, I'm directing <laughs> over here. I do have like their input. I go, I try to tell them from here, and I get phone calls about it. And it's, and it's basically these guys put in a lot of money into these buildings, and they'd rather have it come down there, but they don't do it. And I agree with, I, I wholeheartedly agree with the brick and mortar guys. They're, they're the, the backbone of this town. But by the same token, during the, the peak season, you can't get waited on. Right. I mean, it's just. I don't, I don't, I don't think you're talking about restaurants are take off. Restaurants can care less. They're too busy. Change that capacity. They can't take any. Right, right. But I'm talking about the sandwich shop. I'm, no, I'm talking about the shirt vendors and stuff like that. The, oh, the little oh, shops are the ones that are talking about. It's not going to affect their business. It's not going to affect their business because. It's going to be hot the whole time. It's going to be something of uh, the cart style vendor. A t shirt guy is not going to make it down the boardwalk because it's just not going to be upstairs. It's going to be food in New York City. People are going to try it. And people are going to try it. I just don't see it in work through water sports. It's going to be beverages. Food, you know, ice cream. Mm -hmm. There's a cart guy that runs around with the uh, Italian ice. Mm -hmm. um, my kid would be Jack did sorbets at the farmers market. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they were making I think they did a hundred dollars, hundred twenty bucks one day. Saw that. And they were, how long is it? Two hours? Three hours? Four hours? Mm -hmm. Three hours. I think they said four to seven. Four to seven. Four to seven. They sold the most of the vendors because they had kids. <coughs> so that brings up another issue. If a vendor sells out by two o'clock in the afternoon, is he obligated to stay there the rest of the day? You know, we're talking about a commitment. The model, again, the model is the, uh, the farmer's market. Uh, which is once a week as compared to this model, which was every day. Um, I don't know how you fall someone or hold it against this, but as far as their you know, attendance commitment, if they happen to have had a very successful day uh, and be ready to pack it in. 
tunings. And yeah, you can't fault them because especially during the weekends, that slow. But the weekends, they'd be up right out of line if they're not out there all the time. What's this song? So the attendance requirement Monday, well, I'm going to say Monday was a good day, but you know, Tuesday to Thursday, um, I can see as being difficult for some of these vendors to want to commit to. So again, looking at the, the farmer's market as a model, they have an attendance requirement. You miss X number of days, you lose your spot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that that's the best transferable model to, to this. No, that's good. Be a weekend commitment. Right, most of the people are there. You probably need a one-time fee to kind of fix this out there. Is there anybody in the staff that's kind of working on this? I mean, you need a little task force or something to, because, no, I mean, it's a nice starting for that model, but this is not one day a week for three hours. I mean, that's correct. This is a little more complex. That's correct. Um, that's why you can be, and again, maybe the farm market does not site manager. Um, it's the on site manager. And again, the farm market is going to be wrapping up. So I don't know what kind of analysis they're going to do of how their year went as well. Uh, then maybe things on their model that they need to change. They're already slowing down. Mm -hmm. uh, so we on an on-site manager, 9 a.m. to the sunset, uh, from May 1 to September. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. As opposed to a drive-by observation or a walk-through observation at lunchtime. I know. I would be at that as well. You know, it's sitting later. And I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, if you could do attendance, it would be out of the base on the weekend. It wouldn't take a lot of people for that. You know something, we might, I don't know how much we want to manage this, but I think we might consider the thought, you know, nothing is sold in glass. In glass bottles, stuff like that. Maybe we should have done that. Huh? I think you agree. Yeah, because if that happens to break, yeah. uh, there's no glass. No, 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 no. I believe, I think there's no glass on the beach on this, but people still break it down. Generally, yeah, generally the rule of thumb in most places is no glass on the beach. Yeah. 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 But it's just something I don't know what this yeah. is. I, I think you're right, Dan. Just, 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 this is a pretty. Uh, this is a pretty open uh, uh, ordinance, if you want, for lack of whatever. So I know it's going to go to to uh, town council, and I can see uh, next April we're just we're still trying to fiddle around here uh, because the lawyer has to get a hold of this, and it takes him ten months to to go through. Well, there's a document like we gave them. But the lawyer dropped the ball, but there was no follow up. So there's two, 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 two people that might have that. Andy, is there interest in with the town council on this? Or do they even know about it? Or I don't think they really. Are we know just chasing our tails here? I don't think they know too much about it. Okay. But, I mean. Are they going to want specificity on this? I think they're going to want specificity in the kind of administration of it. So I'm talking about it. Are they going to want a document to be put together over it? Market, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, we... well, this is going to be a lot. Of work. I mean, they could buy the concept and send it back. You know, to work out the work of I think smarter or pass over the time to see if they can more to pursue this. This is going to be a lot of work. If anything, you know, it might come down to if there's enough, if there's enough backlash from the business side, it's not a restaurant. It doesn't want certain aspects of shirt selling and stuff like that. You know, it can be almost restricted just to a food vendor. And no glass food vendor. Yeah, no glass food vendor. <laughs> By the way, it really works. Yeah. If this didn't start with the council, we should probably get some sense of where they are before going too much further. Uh, this right there. Hmm? Actually, this actually started with the vendor. No, and they might be dead. Yeah, yeah. Start with, yeah start, actually, start with some very they wanted to have a satellite, oh, sure. satellite version of their own place in different locations. Yeah, exactly. that's what I see. Happening. Well, they quickly realized that they couldn't deal with both. <laughs> well, that's a people thing. Yeah. 
And that's a hard damn thing to do. It is a hard It's a hard thing to manage two different facilities. You can't get help. I'm under the same like, umbrella. It's very, it's not easy. You have to have some really trusting people. That's a legal thing. <laughs> a lot of cash in there. That's a people thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A parallel track to consider would be the vendors and trucks in the harbor area. Uh, that's, I mean, that's not, it doesn't serve the same purpose of should the age of the avenue, but it is a location that is at least town owned property um, where you know, trucks can set up. Uh, they were able to maintain a 150 foot distance from a brick and mortar establishment and at least provide another option. It's not the most convenient thing for paying to come off the beach, but at least it's an alternative. So it's another place, there's more places to eat, um, and it doesn't deal with some of the open space issues and part time vendors. And I need my space for a year, so I need a decision. The apartment is pretty busy. It does, it, well, I guess it is. Park mode, the, the, the amount of boats go in and out on the weekend for fishing, recreational fishing. Well, the parking lot. The, both of us. Yeah, but uh, top ones. Because with that, even when half those boats go out the water, and then that rush over the shanty, we would wait an hour and a half so we can sleep. Right. So we go to an alternative source of to grab some of the go before they leave. Was there a plenty of area? Well, it's just another source because you get just many people, not as many, but you got a fair amount of people over there going in and out of that water for fishing. So, what were you hoping to come, what were you hoping to get from us on this effort? Progress? Progress. It says the direction to stay. I would love to hear from Jean or Jean would be a big naysayer. And it's not a fan of this kind of stuff. Or or the shame of people. I, I mean, I what we're talking about, the, the, the hot dog carts and that sort of thing, I don't think have any impact. I think it would be a very convenient thing for our beach goers, and I think it would be um, a real a plus to, to our beach. Um, but I think food trucks that might, the brick and mortar guys might be a little bit more concerned about that. I don't know. I'm just guessing. If I had a restaurant to pay for to tilt more taxes and all that stuff, and then, because those, those food trucks can get real elaborate, what they say. You know, they, they can put out $12 meals. And again, basically the only place to have a food truck is on the well, or the bar. The, 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 the shame that people would probably be interested in that city, unless it could be their truck. The, the thing that I would like to see is to get a little bit of feedback from the town council. Should we even be pursuing this? I thought the town council was behind it. You're the only one that knows about it. Oh, yeah, I know mean, they, they all do. They all do? Well, most of them do. Well, can we, uh, can we agree on this, this bourbon share and send it over for the initial review? Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, well, this was since December 2015? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's been six years since the last review. Yeah. Is this going to affect any of the new places on the West side or between Randolph and, and one more time. Mason, or is it the only thing is the uh, on the draft for uh, if someone is taking the smart yeah. not not during hours but they have the lost track because they'll be um, oh, lost track. track. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yes, yeah. we didn't follow up. Yeah, this would be something to take to the town council and then see, you know, whether they want to kill it or get, get more detail. Because we can't get an act on stuff we have in front of them already. 
for instance, you may treat them that animals. Where's that going? Right? You're not going to that. That's just that needs to go to work session. That's going to go to work session right now. Right. Okay, so if they don't give us some direction on this, we're going to be able to do this for next year. So this can, go, this, this can go in the work session in November, too. You stick it in there. They can very well, it's terrible, but at least they want to see it. You can say the to the pros and cons of just what we've done. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is, I mean, it's going to be the bottom line with the taxes and licenses. Well, that can be worked out. Well, we can figure that out. Hey, we can work that out. Yeah. Maybe that's where you get some public input. Okay. And then one other thing, a little question about this. Is there something in the wording of that talks about the pilot aspect of this that we want to try it out and evaluate it before for casting it in stone? No, and the interesting thing is that I was uh, contemplating working into the text of section uh, 3.15b at a sunset theory. Uh, which is to say that if, if the section is in effect for an 18 month period or a 12 month period, at which time it's reevaluated. Okay. Because I you know it, 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 it fundamentally changes the land use in the open space history. Uh, that's probably not a wise thing to leave, to leave open space. Yep. Right. Yep. Agreed. I agree. So that needs to be put in there. I would think it needs to be put in there, or at least one with the operations of it, that the operations of it have a sunset date. So whether that's written into the ordinance or not, um, or the permit or something like that. Somebody got to address it because it would turn out to be on your side. I, I think the operations side would be the best place to do it. Otherwise, if you put it in the ordinance, somebody who's a sticker for reading all the details might have some more. Or questions that you're willing that you're not willing to answer because right. you don't have answers. Yeah, and then it becomes another text amendment. Yeah, it exactly. Is yeah, right, right. 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 Unrestrained by the facts. <laughs> <That's cool>. <laughs> <laughs> no ideas get said in that language. Well, the big town state. Well, I mean, we put. I think we put some thought into it. I remember that. The point yeah. that the big people. Are. And Larry just emphasized to them that this is just a rough trade, just a conceptual, you know, they don't have to. We're, we're trying to get a sense of where they want us to go with it. That's right. really the, the whole purpose of the exercise. Well, business C, set date for comprehensive plan, joint public hearing with town council. Well, um, at the special meeting on the 29th, uh, the council uh, delayed the matter on the comp plan uh, because there's some, you know, several questions that they had about the comp plan. Um, so, did not set a November 1st public hearing date. So, as a result of the council not setting a November 1st public hearing date, I brought, I brought to the Planning Commission uh, setting a December 6th, regular December meeting date, uh, public hearing date, um, to allow the month's period of comment and review of the comments. What are the questions? This is this is what I this is what I got out of it. There's a couple, there's a couple big things that we need. They're on our screen or in the paper? This is what they are. Um, uh, zoning changes in the Harbor District. That with the rezoning of the block um, goes out to the uh, 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 Harbor District to industrial, um, back to more of a working port as opposed to a mixed use harbor. Yes. Uh, that some of the language about, you know, What's currently in the comprehensive plan about hotels and um, mixed use housing and mixed use development everywhere in our district is no longer either likely to happen or has already been sort of overridden by the end of the day, which is to say that industrial zoning. Um, you know, so 
something that'll come over here just text changes. Um, future dredging of, it's mentioned that the uh, harbor will be dredged in the future. Uh, the harbor dredging is completed by now. So again, the calendar's will take that one. Could be dredged again. Could it be two, two businesses there at 35 feet? We've got the spoils area now, it's going to be even easier. Eventacular is no longer viable, um, but Main Street is. Say that again. Eventacular. Very first law and closures. Uh, oh, that's the parent company for it too. Right. So we've got in our partnership section. Um, so that's a partner that, that can be headed out and Main Street partner can be written in. Okay. And I'll just raise myself for the last two. Uh, the town council priorities section remains the 2009 priorities. And I may come. I will defer to the town. I uh, pretty much said, look, no one guy can give guidance on that. Hey, you're the ones. I saw it before. No, they saw it before. And it's like the reason they didn't get touched is because they didn't give any, didn't give us any guidance to do it. So we need some guidance. That's part of the delay because we want to update that to be current. So I know that's part of the thing. I'm sorry. They're looking for us to provide them guidance? No, no. no. We got it. part of the council to give us guidance right, for okay. that. Okay. We don't know what to do there. I'm told right. that. So anything that was not touched was specifically because we got no guidance from you guys. Okay. So I think part of the thing we <coughs> Go through with the council to figure out. So it's their it's their action. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what I got. About two years from now, we're mm -hmm. starting our in the process already. Mm -hmm. Well, those are that we have done five years. Yeah, five years when we started. We're going to get signed. Yeah. Five years. Whoa, whoa, Started with your name. Started. I don't think so. I think it's an effective date. No, no. Yeah, it needs to be concluded in a five-year period. Every five years. When the commission shall review and make any amended changes or regular yeah. changes. Um, yeah. But, but if, that, if that takes six months, then you can start later. Um, if it takes three years, then two years after the new one. We're, we're past oh, three that's years. years on this. But Joan said a while back, Joan said five years doesn't start until the comprehensive plan is signed. Correct. Well, that, what you said, it's. It needs to be done every five years, but no matter how long it takes. If it takes four years to do a comprehensive plan, then one year later we're going to do another. We're seven years after adopting a comprehensive plan. And, and, but the point is, the review has been going on for three of those seven years. Yes, sure. Yes. So I have no trouble saying that the town of Cape Charles has made its obligation under the statute. It's just taken them all. Right. What was well, anticipated to be a one year, Process and started far enough in advance. Yeah. Start two with two years of leeway time. Yeah, three years after that process began, which was August of 2013. And you can look at the difference between those the three years and what we've changed. How much difference has we changed? And then all of a sudden, it's radical. This what you're talking about with the harbor part is you have a comprehensive plan. You post another thing. You just ratified it, and all of a sudden they find out that it's back to industrial. It kind of doesn't jive. So that's one of the reasons they want to take that into consideration and get that taken care of. I don't think that's going to be a big trouble. To do. I think that's some text amendment. Uh, I for what it's worth, and I'm going to pull the point, but I'll just. Uh, uh, okay. Maritime mixed use uh, in the harbor. Some of the language currently reads hotels on the water, restaurants, and commercial locations with harbor front walkways, multi family dwellings will complete the, uh, a major portion of the harbor's edge. Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's you know that's don't weird. forget the Tappy property, and I know what's going on there, but he could, he could still make that a mixed use. He could do that, you know, but if that deal goes through. He said he wasn't going to do that to start off with, but I mean, he could do that. No, he was most likely going to be in that case. So, that, that's you still... Know, that, you know, that's six, six different times. That's still, that's, that still could be valid. It could be. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 
And then the last thing, uh, and it's fairly stated, and I don't know how and it can be addressed in this cycle for the review of the comprehensive plan. Uh, and I don't believe that was the council's interest. I don't want to speak for them. Uh, but I don't think that was the council's interest in making sure that it was addressed in this cycle. Is the age of the supporting documents all between 10 and 20 years old? And there should be a plan to either retire some of Dr. Sick documents uh, or present a plan to update them. And as was, as was pointed out, uh, that doesn't have to cheap or over. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I think, uh, we, okay. We could probably come up with a strong plan to update them. And uh, a, I, I think that's fair. I mean, there are a couple that should be retired. Um, the 1996 preservation plan should be retired as a as an informational document, it should go to you know, the sort of the time right. as a historic document. Historic yeah, document. Okay. Right, right. Um, and we've already updated it in response to Councilman Bennett's comments too. Right. So yeah. it's been one uh, one updating exercise. Right. right. The um, historic district review board has been working on. Right. It. Matter of fact, we could probably spend next month's meeting doing some of that. We do because we don't have to meet with council next month. <laughs> we can. We can. Yeah, I know. There was a lot of town demographic stuff in there that was old too. Based on the, the, the earnings, race, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, whatever it was, the census. 2010, 2010 census. Well, that, well, that stuff's about. Yeah, it's, it's every five years. Yeah, it's every five years. 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 But it's just like by the time you get this stuff in the old town, really. it's old. No. Yeah, and that's, well, I you know the way, the way things have been moving in the town, things are moving so fast, relative, for government speaking, it's moving fast. I'm trying to keep up with it. Because what, we meet once a month? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, it's true. Stuff just happens, I mean. Well, those are healthy Carly. Maybe all the planning commission. Those are healthy commons. I mean, we've been doing things now. <laughs> they're not exactly in line with Well, they're trying to make sure the current plan reflects the current status. Yeah. So, uh, it'll be a continuous comprehensive plan here. That's what we're doing. That's a living document. Well, it's radically changed, as we've seen. It really has. Yeah, from the time we got started. I mean, you got the yacht club, you got all that stuff down there. Now. I don't think that's over on the start. Huh? Over on the start. Yeah. 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 Well, these are good problems, I guess. Well, okay. I do think, I mean, we're at least focused on trying to bring the problem on jobs, too. So that's a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a good thing. That's just true. Well, so is the harbor project now on hold again? Hmm? Is the harbor project now on hold again? What harbor? What the the um, cherry stone project? No, 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 no. No, they was talking about that tan market, the tan problem. So no. it suddenly so goes this month for the industrial side. So as that settles, then we're going to start seeing this stuff happening. Tommy property is supposed to settle at the end of October. Posted, so if Air Bowling's involved with it, it'll happen quick, quickly. Yeah. You, you put that yacht club down there like overnight? Yeah, once, once, that, once that property sells, we can start seeing stuff happening. There's an extra air in the tree line, you just can't see. A big one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I either need um, a motion for December 6th public hearing or move it to November 1st meeting to discuss. Because I think we still need the we could still meet the publication deadline for the two weeks if it's if the decisions made on that one yeah. For December 6th. So I make a motion we said the public hearing for December 6th. Second. All in favor? Uh, are you opposed? So carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's
it's time for item D of all business. Mm -hmm. Want to walk us through it? Yes. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it, it, it came in the mail, and I had a chance to open it up. The revisions and markings are, are, are clear. Uh, but there was little commentary from the attorney in his email except for one issue that's not noted here. Uh, he could refer to it as clawbacks, which is to say the requirement that we've got that if someone defaults on their obligation, they uh, move out of town, their business fails, they sell the business, etc. Uh, that anything that they receive by way of credit needs to be paid back to the town. That's the way our ordinance is written now. This question was, do we find that anywhere else? And actually, in the town of Hillsville, at least that one that I know of, I can do more research on it. The town of Hillsville has got very similar language. So there is a clawback, it calls a clawback. There's a clawback clause in at least one other municipal tourism zone in the county of Virginia. So that's, that's what we got as far as. Why would they even apply? I thought we were trading them back in the prior years. I think what, 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 what it really person. speaks to is, is the fact that we're in Dillon State, and he's probably looking for some legal basis for uh, for not stopping us in our tracks because there's no prior um, allowance of saying. Well, but, but, but just my interpretation. Uh, the, but the way it sounds to me is like if they move out of town, and they don't fulfill their obligation. They fulfill their obligation to get the credit for the previous year's expenditures. So, if we have that in the grant for it, that's in there. No. Next, next six. I just don't know where that's going to ever apply based on what we've talked talk about. I mean, if they move delivery out of town, they're not going to, we're not, we're not, we're not prepaying this. Right. It's postpaying. Correct. So what's the big deal? That's for the Yeah, yeah exactly. Deal. I think, you know. This is all post, not pre. Right. They're not going to do a lump sum. No, right. right. <coughs> they have to pre-qualify. Yeah. They have to prove that they did it. Right. That's why I'm like, why do we even need that? Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. I think it should be just that should be go away. Exactly. So there's no way you're gonna get it by doing it, prove it.
business leaves the town to conduct business in another location within three years. Uh, after the ex ex expiration of all incentive years, it will be required to repay the town the total amount of economic stimulus credits received. This is correct. How do you want to enforce something like that? Well, not only that, but how, how, how relevant is it? Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the bigger picture, bigger, bigger question. Yeah. They've already qualified. Mm -hmm. They earned the right. To yeah, they, 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 yeah, they earned it. So yeah. the cross of the next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what do you want? We want to just put this on their uh, work schedule again.